you need to clearly understand the difference between habits and samskaras. Samskaras motivate you to do something again and again. Your samskaras are the accumulation of impressions and merits and demerits that are stored in the conscious and unconscious mind. You do not have control over your samskaras. One way to think of this is if I train myself in a habit, I may create a habit that says, I get up a certain time in the morning, I go empty my bowels and bladders, bladder, <laughs> I drink some water, I clean my teeth and my mouth, I shower, I go do my practice, do my meditation. have a nice practice. I may have a routine and it may take some time to create that. Am I creating a habit or a samskara? I'm creating a habit, a useful habit. He's saying here we should have some idea of the difference between habits and samskara. I'm creating a good habit. I'm creating a routine. But when I eat my favorite snack and I keep feeding that, and every time the desire comes up, I feed it again. I'm creating a habit of sorts, but it, comes, it becomes very deep. It becomes a samskara. The deep memory of that experience that's colored with attraction or aversion. We need to purify the samskaras. Just because we have a habit doesn't mean it's a bad habit. Samskaras are colored with attraction and aversion, both of which are attachment. Attraction is attachment. Aversion is attachment. If I'm putting a lot of energy into pushing something or someone away, I'm attached. If I'm pulling it to me because I like it, I like it, I'm attached. Both are attachment. Both of these are attachment. And, and the samskara is that it's a deep impression that's colored with this or this. It's colored with one or the other and it drives itself to be fed over and over again. And these are latent. These are what lie in the latent form in the chitta. And when they come to life, that's kama. That turns into I want. At, in the middle of the night when you're laying in bed sleeping, they're in latent form. There, there's no kama going on. If it starts to stir and you start to have a dream about that, it may start the process of kama. If it gets strong enough, it wakes you up and you say, I'm going to the refrigerator and freezer and getting some more of that ice cream or, or whatever it happens to be. Then it's, it's kama. Before that, it's the samskara. Samskara means it's colored by attraction or aversion. And then also colored by fear, the fifth klesha, the fear of, of, of not holding on to or getting what I want and the fear of losing what I have kind of thing. So the samskara is the deep impression. But just because it's a habit pattern doesn't mean that it's the samskara that's dragging me around and controlling my life. So it's just a fine point of discernment that just, just because something's a habit doesn't mean that it's bad. Is having a habit of meditation every day, is that a bad habit? You know, better get rid of that habit. That's troublesome. That might turn into a samskara. And so it's useful to discern between them. Swamiji says, there are many layers and levels of samskaras, the impressions of your actions and desires asleep in your unconscious. These samskaras become active every now and again. In other words, they're com they, take, they come, turn into kama, I want. And they motivate and control your mind and your emotions. The mind alone cannot do anything by itself. The mind has no power to take in information by itself if the senses are not focused on it. If your eyes are not directed towards something, the mind cannot see or perceive it. The mind employs the senses of hearing, seeing, tasting, touching, and smelling. These are the five cognitive senses. There are also another five gross senses, the carmendrias, 
which here he lists as the mouth, the hands, the feet, the organs of elimination and generation. And feet are the symbol of motion. Hands are the, are, are the, genera- the, the symbol of grasping or holding. The mouth is used as an expression, as a symbol for expression, communicating outward, speaking. The mind functions through those senses, those ten indrias. Whenever an event takes place that relates to an impression in your mind, whenever an event takes place that's picked up by those senses that relates to one of those latent impressions deep in the mind, I'm adding some words there, then the impression or samskara becomes active. So you see your favorite food sitting there. All of a sudden you see it or you smell it. Sometimes you go through a a market area or a shop area where they're cooking some sort of especially good food. Cinnamon. Cooked cinnamon, just it just draws. There's a cinnamon sweet place that I remember. That it filled the air with this smell. It draws you in. So one of the cognitive senses pricks, pricks it up and into the mind, and then the impression or samskara becomes active. The conscious mind is actually controlled by the unconscious. And that's why we human beings cannot easily make process progress. So the comma arises, the desire comes, when a sensory input happens of some version, and it awakens the samskara. Now we have comma. Now we have active desire. You know how to culture and cultivate only a small part of your mind, but a vast part of the mind remains unknown to you. And we want to know this. We want to see this process. All your actions leave some impression in your unconscious mind. And those impressions then become your samskaras and control your life. They become the deep impressions that when something causes them to stir, they become comma, active desire. Once it becomes active desire, there's only two possible outcomes. It's either fulfilled or unfulfilled, which is what we talked about when we did read Swamiji's information descriptions on those streams of emotion, the six streams of emotion that we added, noted that elsewhere he said seven because of jealousy was added in there. So the samskara is there because an impression came in, went to the basement of the mind called chitta, got stored there, colored as I like or I don't don't like. Who was it colored by? Ahamkara, ego. I like that or I dislike that. And so it just sits there as a samskara in the latent unconscious. Now, later, a week later, a year later, a decade later, here's some stimulus that comes in through the cognitive senses, Manas brings it in, matches it up with what's on the hard drive, and all of a sudden that latent memory trace awakens and becomes comma, colored with comma, active desire. Now that I I, I, I hear a name of a person I haven't heard of or seen in many years, it's someone I like, it's colored with attraction. Like, oh yeah, how's he doing? Nice to hear about him. Or it's somebody that I didn't like, and all of a sudden, hmm, you know, the, the opposite happens. But the deep impression has been sitting there in latent form maybe for years. But it comes into active desire, comma, to, to have or to avoid. And then if it's fulfilled, then certain emotional responses come. If it's not fulfilled, certain emotional responses come. And all of those are based on the four primitive urges, primitive fountains most significant of which is self-preservation. Because all of those habit patterns define my personality. They define me as who I think I am. It's not just I-ness. Remember, ahamkara means I-maker. The literal translation of ahamkara, which we say, call it ego, is actually I-maker. It's the thing that sets the stage for us to be able to take on false identity and then we get in trouble.